From Square Two, this is What's Wrong With Revenue. I'm Mike Lieberman, CEO at Square Two, and along with my longtime friend and business partner, Eric Kalis, this show answers the question many CEOs, CMOs, CROs, and business owners are asking, what's wrong with revenue? New shows drop every Thursday morning. You can find the video version of the show on YouTube at the Square Two Marketing Channel, on our website at the What's Wrong With Revenue page located in the footer, or on our free streaming service, Square2 Plus, both located at square2marketing.com. You can subscribe to the show or subscribe to Square2 Plus and we'll email you new show content as soon as it's published. You can also submit questions to the show on the What's Wrong With Revenue page of our website. Eric and I answer questions every single episode. You can also find the podcast version of the show on all your favorite podcast platforms. Enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to What's Wrong With Revenue, Season 2, Episode 10. I'm Mike Lieberman, CEO of Square 2. I'm joined by my longtime friend and business partner and new pickleball video buddy, Eric Kalis. Hey, Eric, how you doing? Hey, everybody. Today, in Episode 10, we're going to talk about how a system like RGS matches up with other operating systems, because honestly, there are a lot of them out there, and we'll help you figure it all out today. Uh, like I always start the show, a little bit of housekeeping Check out what's wrong with revenue on our YouTube channel. Square2marketing.com has a YouTube channel. You can get all of the video versions of what's wrong with revenue there. Please like us, subscribe, and leave comments. We really appreciate the feedback from our audiences. So check out the show on YouTube. You can also get the show at our website. We have a what's wrong with revenue page where you can subscribe to the show. We will email the show after it's dropped on Thursday mornings right to your inbox. We'll even give you uh, some insights into what some upcoming shows might look like. And you can submit questions like we answered last week, a ton of questions last week. You can submit questions to Eric and me right there on the page. There's a form for questions. We will happily answer them. You can also get the show on Square 2's free streaming service, Square 2+. Plus. Also located at our website, square2marketing.com backslash square2plus. There is a link at the bottom in the footer. Click on it. It has all of our audio and video uh, content right there. We have channels for CEOs, CROs, CMOs. We have a technology channel where we do a lot of HubSpot technology talks. Go check it out and you can subscribe and get notifications when new stuff posts to Square2+. Plus. So today, you know, the idea of a system is not new. In fact, most areas of your business already have systems. You use a system for HR, you use a system for finance, you probably have a system for purchasing, and these systems have been in your businesses for decades. Uh, but what's interesting and what Eric and I uncovered is that there's never generally a system for revenue. Now, that's fine, but today we want to talk about other strategic planning systems like EOS, Gazelles, and other operating systems and how the revenue generation system connects so nicely to these strategic planning operating systems. And the trend is definitely more and more in favor of these particular kinds of systems like EOS. So if you're wondering, well, I have EOS and how does RGS connect with that? Or we do strategic planning like Gazelles and what would I do with RGS? We're going to answer those questions for you today, unlock all the connections, all the complementary opportunities and uh, make it clear how these systems work together. Specifically, how does RGS work with a system like EOS? Why EOS companies understand RGS and how it benefits you to have both? What are some of the similarities and some differences between RGS and other systems like EOS? And then some of our experiences when companies have EOS experience and when they don't, just so you can understand what some of the pluses and minuses are. So Eric, I know you've spent the last couple of months immersing yourself in the strategic planning community, and you are very comfortable with all these tools. Why don't you take us out today and give us a little primer on uh, what's going on with these strategic planning platforms? Yeah, thanks, Mike. I mean, you know, business owners since the dawn of time have been looking for ways to drive more revenue and then subsequently make more money. In fact, I forget which famous person it was. They said that the sole purpose of a business is to generate a profit, not to be money grubbing business owners, but to make sure that there's enough money to continue the business, to let it grow, feed the families that work there, help the clients that engage with it. So 
business owners are constantly looking for solutions, right? The next big thing. Look at the business coaching industry, right? The the entrepreneurial groups that are out there, the chambers of commerce that, you know, are specifically designed to help business owners. People adapt those uh, quite readily without even hesitation. Now, when you go and you engage in a strategic planning, or let's just say an operating system to run your business, and you gave some good examples, we'll use accounting. In the beginning, you're a little sloppy. You take the check, that you got from the client, you put it in the inside jacket of your pocket, you're supposed to go to the bank and deposit it. You then realize three months later that you did not deposit that check and you're like, I need a system. You then might hire an accountant to put that system in place. How do we receive money? How do we keep track of it? How do we follow up on people that owe us money? How do we pay our bills? How do we organize our bills? How do we prioritize our bills? It seems that business owners literally engage blindly, like I must have a system, so I have to just pick one. And that is pretty important, right? I now have solved my problems around accounting. I'm keeping track of the money. I'm making sure that my metrics are in place. I have a consultant like an accountant or a fractional CFO that helps me. And everything tends to settle down and run smoothly. But Mike, literally in the entire 20 years that we've been helping business owners drive revenue, we've never come across one person who says, oh, I've developed my own revenue generation system. I guess if they had, they wouldn't be talking to us because they'd be killing it or maybe sitting on their uh, private island uh, eating crab crab and, uh, and lobster. So why is it that people don't put any effort into creating an ongoing system that will help them grow their company and get to the vision uh, that they created when they started the company? It is completely unbeknownst to us. So our company, Square Two, and for those of you that are listening, you know, uh, 45 uh, uh, approximate team members, been around 20 years, we're a virtual company. And what we do is help the uh, help our clients on the entire buyer's journey, right? For the first time that someone hears about you, all the way until they buy something, and then even after when we cross-sell them and upsell them, we help create that. Well, we identified that we work with a lot of people that spend a lot of money to be in Vistage to learn how to improve their business and spend money with an EOS implementer and perhaps have a business coach that helps them. But what is missing is this system to plug in that you can create revenue. And that's when it struck us like a a bolt of lightning that if we could show people the system that we've been using at Square Two for 20 years, it might fill the gap of what's needed to have consistent revenue growth. Now, once you have this system, you have to integrate it into your other systems because you can't have multiple systems. It's too hard to keep track of. If you're on the scaling up, or as Mike said, Gazelle's platform, then whenever you're having your monthly meeting, you're looking at your revenue numbers. How many new leads did we get and so forth, right? But there's no system in how to generate those leads. There's no system in how to close those deals. It's just a cursory look at what's going on in the metrics. And then after the meeting, maybe leaning into the sales team, hey, folks, you have to hit your number. How they get there, what they're doing to do is a bit of a mystery and, of course, unique to every company. And that's where we thought it was absolutely ridiculous. We have to be able to create a system that would integrate with other systems so that everything works smoothly together like a well-oiled machine. Sorry for the long opening, Mike, but this is a pretty important factor today. Yeah, it is. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of our listeners have heard of EOS and, and Gazelles. They're both very popular and, and growing very quickly. So there's obviously an interest in the market for these, these uh, strategic operating systems, right? But both of those, uh, the two examples we're talking the most about, they really help you with big picture items associated with your business. So maybe you could just spend a couple minutes talking about how they do focus on big picture, but not really on the specific departmental needs like where, where RGS would step in. So maybe you could do a little bit of like, you know, EOS and Gazelle's covers up here, and we're using RGS to slide into this one particular lane. Maybe you could educate our audience on that. Yeah, 
So Mike and I are big fans of EOS, the Entrepreneurial Operating System, which was founded by Gino Wickman, I don't know, 25 years ago, when he inherited his father's business, and he understood very quickly that it was a mess. And he set out to create a system to run his business, to fix all the problems and keep them uh, running uh, or moving forward in a smooth fashion. He took the best thinking from all the minds at the time, and he created this platform. And the platform called the Entrepreneurial Operating System helps you with basically two parts to your business. The first part is the strategy, the vision, the mission, right? All the things that Mike referred to earlier. And then the second part is that it gives you a framework to run weekly meetings to get all that stuff done so you can achieve the vision that you're looking for. So part of EOS specifically is a section called VTO, the Vision Traction Organizer. And that starts with what is your big, hairy, audacious goal? Because if you don't have a vision of where you're going, how the heck can you get there? So um, a good example would be the BHAG or big, hairy, audacious goal for Microsoft was to put a personal computer on every person's desk in America. That was their original BHAG. And then Subway Sandwiches, their BHAG was to have every American spend 50 cents at Subway uh, in a, some time period. So these are like big lofty goals that you can set that are like give your team the motivation and paint a picture of where you want to go. That's great. Now that you know what the big picture is, the next step of an entrepreneurial operating system is to break it down into like a three or a five or a 10 year vision, something a little bit more near term that your team could actually set some metrics and goals to that's not so highfalutin, it's a little bit more granular. So for example, uh, at Square Two, we set a five-year goal and not just about revenue and profit, but we paint a picture of where we wanna be, what kinds of clients we wanna have, what kind of team. And we really work hard to like kind of like visualize where we want to be. But there are also some quantifications like what do you want revenue to be and how many customers do you want, things like that. Now, once you have that, you got to say, well, what do we have to do this year in order to get to our three, five or 10 year goals? And now you have an annual planning, which a lots of companies engage in annual planning. The challenge is a little bit of a sidebar here is that when most companies engage in annual planning, they create the plan in October or November, they give each other high fives, and then it rarely gets executed because it sits on the shelf and gets dust because they check the box that we did planning. What EOS does is say, well, we have our annual plan, but every single week, every department, including the leadership team is working on what are the little moves we have to make this week to get to the quarterly uh, rocks or objectives that we set to get to that annual goal. So now it starts to get a little granular. Now, as part of that VTO, the Vision Traction Organizer, there's also different uh, parts of that that support the big vision. One of them happens to be marketing strategy. And here's where the problem is. In that marketing strategy, the EOS team asked for some very, 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 very high level answers like, who are you targeting? Or what are your three, as they call them, uniques, which in our world are differentiators or as we call them, remarkables. And then it stops. So the business owner works with their coach, let's say, and they say, okay, what are our three uh, uniques? Well, we have the best people, uh, we've been around the longest, uh, and our product is the best. And that's no problem. And if you're comfortable with that, keep moving on, on forward. But we know from being uh, in that specific slice of the VTO in and uh, in a daily in and out of that, that is just not going to cut it. So what happens there is that if you go to market and you say, we have the best people, we have the biggest factory, we've been around the longest, the competitors have an easy time deflecting that or minimizing that because they could say the same thing, or they actually might have some differentiators that are true. So what Mike and I saw going through our own company's EOS journey is that this is a little bit of a soft spot when it comes to how do you really grow your company, because it certainly sets a framework for operations and things that have to get done, order the machine, train these people, hire more people, like all of those things are taken care of, but not the hard work to set a sales and marketing strategy that's going to result in the revenue you need to keep growing your company towards that vision that you said earlier. And that's when we set up RGS, because we were like, this is a no brainer. If we could plug this soft spot, it'll give companies the ability to be much more robust in their revenue generation efforts and subsequently get to the vision that they wanted to. So hear me now, having the best people, being around the longest, winning the most awards is not a differentiator. Differentiators have to have two specific definitions. 
one, it has to be unique to your company. And two, it has to be so interesting enough that someone will tell their buddy. When you put those two limiters on those differentiators, you can see quite quickly how some of the traditional EOS plugins fail. We have the best people. The other people say they have the best people. We've been around the longest. No, we've been around the longest. We have the best product. No, we have the best product. And none of those three issues are obviously interesting enough that someone would tell their buddy. And that's where diving into RGS, the revenue generation system, complements and plugs that gap. Yeah, that's really good an explanation. I'll add some color to two two things you said. Um, first thing is we hear this from our clients very frequently when we talk about differentiators of being remarkable. They say something like, "Well, I know our competitors say they have the best people, but we really do. They they really don't have the best people, and we really do." And we spend a little bit of time helping them understand that it's more about outside perception than reality. So. It could be right. It could be 100% correct. They might actually have the best people, but their competitors are saying, anyway, they have the best people. And that's all that matters. It matters what they say. It really doesn't matter what the reality of it is because the prospect doesn't know any different. They're still getting to know both companies. And as far as they're concerned, they both have good people. So, you know, it's not about what reality is. It's about the perception of the marketplace. And that's an important takeaway too, when you're trying to decide what really makes you remarkable. The other thing Eric said that I thought was interesting is, you know, a lot of companies set big goals for themselves and then struggle to get there. And um, I'm very connected to that effort right now. I'm, I'm training for a, a, a 10 mile race. I've never run 10, 10 miles before, but I have run long distances. And Everybody who runs says the same thing. The hardest part of running is putting your sneakers on and, and going outside of the door. Once you get that done, it generally gets easier from there. And it's also easier when you don't think about how far you're going, but you think about just getting to the next milestone. It could be a fire hydrant. It could be a street light. It could be a street sign. It could be a colored car you see in the future. It could be the corner. All you're trying to do is get to that next milestone and the milestone after that and the milestone after that and the milestone after that. Matt, honestly, before you know it, you're finished. You did it. You did your five miles. You did your eight miles. However many miles you're trying to do, you did it a little piece at a time. And you kind of tricked yourself to, to, to get there by just uh, setting very attainable and much uh, shorter milestones along the way. It's the same thing we're, we're encouraging you to do here. You know, having a 10-year BHAG where you're going to, Triple revenue is a monumental task, but if every week you tip uh, 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 tick away at a little piece of that, 52 weeks are going to go by. You're going to have 52 improvements. You're going to be well on your way towards hitting that 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 BHAG. So these systems are critical to helping you breaking down break down big goals into manageable goals and work through them in a in a consistent basis. So. Uh, this is a, a lot of good advice for business owners that might be struggling to grow or struggling to manage their companies. These systems do a really good job helping you manage it in a, in a much uh, easier to digest way. I mean, it's true. Like, you know, your team doesn't want to be frustrated either. If we were like, how do we get from 2,500 website visitors a month to 3,000, right? Like 500 visitors a month is not so crazy. But if it's like, we need to blow it out, we need 10,000 visitors tomorrow, the team gets frustrated, someone drops off, nothing works. It's that incremental increase. And I think EOS does a good job of the weekly L10 or level 10 meetings of there's no more than seven days go by that we're checking in. How are we doing on these little tasks that we talked about? Um, obviously, for more information on that, you should check out Gino Wickman's book, Traction, and that'll give you some of the color behind what we're talking about here. Good. All right. So, Eric, maybe you could answer this question. Why do EOS companies understand RGS and um, why it would be beneficial to have both of them? Well, you know, it's really not both of them, you know, it's one platform with two components. And let me explain what I mean. If you're following EOS, your sales team and or your marketing team should be having weekly level 10 meetings. They should be getting together as a department and saying, what do we have to do this week to get to our quarterly objectives, which will help us get to our annual goal. Now, the different twists that we put on it is that we feel that marketing and sales, especially now, should be completely aligned and that we should uh, erase the dotted line between sales and marketing and group them together into one department called the revenue team. 
in the revenue team, everybody's now pulling on the rope in the same direction in order to hit the revenue number. There's no conflict between sales complaining about weak leads from the marketing team and marketing team complaining about the sales team can't close the sweet leads we're generating. We're putting them all together into one team. And in that team, some people are responsible for generating leads and other people are responsible for closing leads. But now we're obviously working together. So if you would slightly adjust your uh, weekly L10 or level 10 meeting for your sales and or your marketing, put them together into the revenue team meeting, you, you have the basis of RGS. Now in RGS, we have some added components that are specific to revenue generation, right? What's your strategy? Or in other words, your big story and who are you telling it to? What tactics do we need to build? Your website, email marketing. What campaigns do we need to execute? Inbound, outbound, ABM, uh, demand generation. Uh, what technology do we need to use? Salesforce, HubSpot. Uh, what resources do we need? Internal, external, and of course, the process itself, which is the basis of the EOS. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, 201 uh, sales and marketing L10 meeting is RGS. And that's why it's important to like understand that you have to have a little bit of a different approach. Now, to be honest, every L10 meeting should be different for every department. It's not going to be exactly the same for the manufacturing team or the operations team as it is for the accounting team. So we're just encouraging that it's a little bit more of a nuance when you're doing a revenue generation effort than it is running the finance L10 meeting. And that's where RGS comes from. But for anybody familiar with uh, scaling up, aka Gazelles or EOS, once they see what RGS is all about, they're like, oh, I get it. I've been doing this all along. This is just an added layer on top of what I'm doing to make my revenue generation more effective. They understand 70% of the underlying foundation is from these strategic planning platforms. Yeah, I, I think it's important to know that we wanted that familiarity in RGS. We wanted people who had some experiences with EOS and, and other strategic planning platforms to be comfortable with some of the things they would be doing in RGS, as opposed to asking them to learn a whole new set of skills along the way, right? Like level 10 meetings are already very well run meetings. Well, I'm going to ask you in a second to talk about like, what are some of the differences in a revenue team meeting to a traditional EOS uh um, you know, strategic planning meeting, but like the, the 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 format is basically the same, right? Like they're already running a very effective meeting. Um, we're just using that same format to run a very effective meeting in a very narrow part of the business, right? So we well, wanted people to be there, like, Mike. You're right. Is narrow, right? It's just yeah. about revenue generation, not the business as a whole. Yeah, yeah. And they should be like, oh yeah, I've seen that before. Oh yeah, we run this over here. Like this is comfortable for us. We're just going to use that same format to focus uh, like a laser on this particular part of the business. So, like I said, you know, we adjusted the L10 meeting for the revenue team meeting. So maybe you could talk a little bit about what some of those adjustments were um, from the uh, the EOS strategic planning L10 to the RGS revenue team meeting. Yeah. So, um you know, the L, huge fans of EOS, we use it at our company literally on a weekly basis, or I guess daily basis, if everybody's attacking their to-do list every day. But there was definitely some deficiencies when you're running an L10 meeting for your revenue team. And the biggest part of that is that when you're working um, on driving revenue, the sales opportunities are a big part of that conversation. So let's just talk about the general um, framework of a traditional L10 meeting. You have your segue, which is to get everybody in the right state of mind, talk about something personal, talk about something business, a big success that you had. And that kind of clears the head and we're focused and we're talking about less than five minutes. Now we're into the meeting. We start to talk about the data right? We're looking at data. Well, marketing and sales, that's cool. We want to see our website traffic, conversions, MQLs, SQL, sales opportunities, close rate, how many deals are in the final stages of closing, all of those kinds of things are appropriate for data. If there is something that's out of whack with data, you drop it down into IDS, identify, discuss, and solve, which is the meat of the entire meeting. Then you look at things like your to-dos. Everybody said they would do a couple things this week around generating revenue. Did everything get done? Great. Oh, there's a challenge. Drop it down to IDS. So that's very similar. But now the next section is headlines in a traditional meeting. And for headlines, 
we wanted to swap that out for a discussion around the sales opportunity. So the sales team comes to that portion and they take, however you want to define it, the deals in the final stages of closing and they discuss them. If I'm Eric, the salesperson, and I have three deals and I have 100% uh, uh, confidence that they're going to close, nothing to talk about. But if I have a deal that's a little bit stuck, which is more often than not, and I need help from the team breaking it open, we can drop it down into the IDS section and talk about that specific sales opportunity. That is the major difference between an L10 traditionally and a revenue generation system weekly revenue team meeting, because that sales opportunity really require a sales opportunity review really requires some time because that's where the rubber meets the road. If we're not leaning into closing those deals, we don't add them to our monthly revenue. We don't hit the number we're looking for. So let me give you a quick example. One of the salespeople at Square Two was working on a specific opportunity and the people went underground or they went dark, as people say, and they wouldn't reply. So we said, well, let's talk about this in our IDX session. So we dropped it down into the meat of the meeting and that became a subject that we wanted to attack. The salesperson gave no more than two minutes on what was going on. And then we opened it up to discussion to the entire team, the marketing folks, the customer service folks, and the salespeople. What do you think we could do in this situation? What we identified based on the conversation with the salesperson is that they were having some trouble um, believing that the results that Square Two Marketing was promising them would actually come to fruition. So we said, okay, if this is the scenario, let's look at the revenue cycle model we created for them, which is a visual example of the buyer's journey and the metrics that go with it and what we projected. Let's give an example of another client or two that was a little bit reticent that is now experiencing great results. And let's put the whole thing into a video and send it over to them. So that was our right or wrong, can't tell you, but that was the brainstorming result of that specific scenario. Now, the to-do for that specific salesperson was to create that video over the next week and send it to that client. Now, I'm telling you this story because it was a big win for Square Two. They got the video within a 30-minute time period, replied and said, thank you so much for the extra effort. This made us feel more comfortable. Let's move forward. But that had something that needed the team to lean into that solution. It wasn't up to the individual salesperson to kind of figure that out on their own. It was an issue. We had an issue closing that deal. Well, there's no place for that in the traditional level 10 meeting from EOS. We added in the sales opportunity review and made that part of the discussion unique to RGS system. Now, I want to just give you a few minutes on this, you know, um, scenario of IDS. IDS is the essence of what goes on in a revenue team meeting or I guess a level 10 EOS meeting. There's a 90 minute meeting scheduled and 60 minutes of it are really for looking at the problems or issues that are occurring, clearing the obstacles, brainstorming on solutions. You don't always have the answer at the end of the meeting, but at least you have some action items to keep moving forward to break that obstacle open or achieve the result that you're looking for. That combination of smart people in your company getting together and focusing on issues in, around revenue generation for an hour a week and then working on the things that come out of that discussion is priceless because the math becomes very evident. If you break open, let's say two or three issues every meeting times 52 weeks a year, you've solved 150 to 250 problems around revenue generation in your company over the course of just one year. Think about how much more potent your efforts will be when you have the whole team in unison working together. Yeah, that's a really good description. And you know, one of the things you didn't talk about, and it's a revenue team meeting, we do this at Square Two at ours, but we encourage other clients to do this too, is you got to talk about revenue from customers. So one of the things we've been doing at Square Two for a long time is not just talking about revenue from new opportunities, but revenue from current opportunities too. And I, you know, I literally sit down with our director of client services and go through all the clients and see where are there opportunities for us to expand our engagement, what revenue might be at risk, because lots of companies lose clients and that revenue has to be replaced. And in some cases, that's there, there are lots of things that can be done proactively to prevent a client from leaving or uh, that, that revenue from walking out the door. So, you know, when you bring customer service to the, ta to the table and they're working with sales and they're working with marketing, uh, you, you get a lot of powerful perspectives to help the company hit its revenue goals. And I'm, I'm mentioning this customer service and this customer revenue piece of it 
because I think that's there. Obviously, the you know redheaded stepsister of most of these conversations at most companies, they do talk about marketing, how many leads we're getting, they do talk about sales, how many new customers do we sign, but lots of them ignore the revenue opportunities right there in their current customer base, uh, whether it's protect revenue or generate new revenue, and that has to be part of this conversation also. And in your in your headline section, you know I would encourage people running RGS to spend just as much time talking about customer revenue, either at risk or potential new customer revenue as they are talking about just general new revenue from new from new customers. Yeah, I mean, you got to appreciate, you know, the focus of that, right? And while there might be like a, account planning meetings at companies and figuring it out, I mean, this is a rhythm that doesn't stop every week. We're talking about driving revenue, driving revenue, existing clients, new clients, opportunities, beginning of the journey, middle of the journey, end of the journey. Like it's a really deep and rich conversation around how we can grow the business. And to be honest, we've experienced ourselves. We've been growing like crazy. And, and I'm, I'm not sure I could attribute the whole thing to EOS, but certainly it gave us the framework to make sure we're going in the right direction and everything's running smoothly. Yeah, 100%. Okay, one topic here before we wrap the show up is, you know, we've been talking about the similarities between these uh, operating systems and RGS, um, but what um, experiences might companies be looking at if they don't have those experiences? Like, for instance, they're looking at RGS for the first time, they need a revenue generation system, but they're not really trained in EOS. They haven't been practicing scaling up. They, they don't have haven't had a coach before like how what challenges would you see in that scenario uh that we might want to cover with our uh, audience yeah it's a good point and you know if you remember way back when when we developed rgs mike we accounted for that because not everybody's on a you know strategic planning system and not everybody has hubspot and not everybody's the perfect like intersection of those things so what we created in the rgs system is the onboarding of the weekly revenue team meeting and what I mean by that is that when you um, engage with RGS at Square Two, you get a coach. And before they even go into what's your big story, what's your BHAG, we start to lay the rhythms of what it is like to have a meeting. Because for those that aren't experienced at EOS, it takes, I would say, I don't know, four to six weeks or four to six meetings to kind of get the groove of what that meeting feels like. It's a very specific meeting and it has a very powerful outcome, but you got to know how to use it like any other tool. So what we do is even if you don't have any understanding of what EOS is, we give you that primer on how important it is to have the weekly revenue team meeting, the whys behind it, the nuances of each section, the agenda, the software that we use, 90.io or EOS1, um, and then really set up companies that don't have experience. Now, if you do have experience in EOS, it takes like two or three meetings and you're grooving. But when you don't have experience, there's a little bit of education and training built into the program so that anybody, whether you're using a platform like uh, Scaling Up, Gazelles, EOS, or whatever, um, can uh, still utilize that to its full intent. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Very good. You think there's anything we didn't cover on this particular topic? Well, I, I, I think there's like... You know, I, I could sit in the shoes of our listener today and say, great, these guys are trying to sell me another thing I got to add on. You don't have to. One of the things that we created in our mission to help entrepreneurs hit their revenue targets is that we have a lot of tools that we created with RGS that you could use yourself. So, you know, give it a try yourself. Start to um, change your weekly L10 sales meeting and weekly L10 uh, marketing meeting into one revenue team meeting. Start to implement some of the tools that we provide you. If you have challenges, you can always hire a, a coach to help guide you through it. But, you know, give it a try because we wouldn't be spending all this time talking about RGS unless we were passionate and experienced in understanding that this is the secret to companies getting consistent revenue growth. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the key is, you know, when we run the system for our clients they get they get good results but that's just a particular slice of the market there are plenty of people who are capable of running this on their own uh, taking the tools taking the process taking the system and doing it on their own and in fact we'd be thrilled if there were it's a huge group of companies that did it on their own and and got the same amount of success as when we we help clients with uh, yeah, look, monetarily, um, revenue for square two or not, if you push that aside, we're on a mission to lead a revolution in all of these frustrated entrepreneurs that just can't hit the revenue uh, targets and don't know why. If you have a system, 
95% of the battle is now complete. You just have to execute on the system. But just leaving it up to willy-nilly, oh, I hope that sales come in and I hope I have a good salesperson and my part-time college intern marketing person, all of that stuff, it's just really old school. You got to lean into a system. And as you said, open the show, just like accounting, just like manufacturing, just like HR, just get the system. Yeah, it's a really good point. Awesome. So next week, we're going to tackle... One of my biggest frustrations in terms of working with companies in this area is they don't have a budget or they're not willing to admit their budget. And so we're going to talk a little bit how a system like RGS helps manage and set your budget, because if I have to sit through one more meeting where the prospect tells us, I don't know what my budget is, I don't know if I can do it anymore. Like they, you got, you have a budget for everything else. How is it possible? They don't have a budget for marketing. So I get it. Maybe they've never done it before. Maybe they're not certain. Maybe they don't want to share it with us because they think it's going to you know, influence what we tell them. But you have a budget for everything else. You're going to need a budget for marketing. And our show next week going to tackle that head on and help you understand how a system like RGS helps you manage and set your budget. So thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, to remind you, you can check out the show on Square Two's YouTube channel. Square Two Marketing has a YouTube channel. All of our uh, video shows, all of the What's Wrong With Revenue shows from season one and two are posted on that channel. Uh, you can subscribe to it. You can like it. You can leave us comments. We appreciate all the feedback from our listeners and watchers. You can also get the show on Square Two Plus, Square Two's free streaming service located on our website, square2marketing.com backslash square two plus. There's a link at the bottom in the footer. Click on it. It'll look like Netflix. You can subscribe to it and you get notified of all the new uh, audio and video content we put up there. And we do post fairly regularly. So check it out. And if you love the show, there's a page for What's On Earth Avenue in the footer of our website. Click on it. Check it out. You can subscribe to the show. We'll email you the shows when they drop every Thursday. We'll actually give you a little bit of insight into what upcoming shows are coming down the pike so you can uh, get excited about that. And you can submit questions. Last show, Eric and I answered a ton of questions. We'll probably do more questions next week or the week after. So if you have any, go to that page, submit them, and we will happily handle them for you. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We like doing it. We appreciate all your feedback and good wishes around the show. And have a great day. Have a good one.